Hello everybody, welcome back to Read with Belle. I am so glad you're here. So I got a new mic and I really really hope this helps with the sound and quality of my videos. Um, that aside, today I want to talk about my physical TBR. So there are a few exciting prizes that you know are coming up. For example, I am really really looking forward to the Women's Prize for Fiction long list. I took a look at the non-fiction long list and I picked out a few that I was really interested in. And I have reserved a few of them for my library. So those are gonna come in in a little bit. I know one is already available to pick up, but I just did not get around to that today. But I did pick up four other books from my library. And then there are a few that I've purchased that are on my physical TBR that I wanna show you guys. I am, <laughs> I think, a little bit too optimistic about being able to read all these books before the long list comes out in early March. So when that comes out, my focus will definitely be on trying to get through as many books on the long list as I possibly can before the shortlist gets announced. And once I, you know, put my entire focus on that, a lot of these books are gonna I guess fall to the wayside so before that I know I only have like is it like two weeks or ten days or something before that happens I just want to try to read as many of these books as I possibly can I will prioritize the books that I get from the library so that's what I'm gonna show first and then I have a few other more that I want to get to a random side note if you don't use your local library please utilize it. It's such a great resource. You get more than books. Um, it's an amazing place to hang out. I love my local library. So yeah, these are the books I got there. The first one is Lauren Groff, The Vaster Wilds. This is my current read and it's blurbed by some really fantastic authors like Madeline Miller, um, Naomi Alderman, Daisy Johnson, and Emily St. John Mandel. These are really big name in the publishing the book industry these are really big author names so i am really excited i've read about like 52 pages so far and i can say that the writing is very atmospheric it is very mysterious and it is exquisite writing it is peak atmospheric writing and i love that if you like that a lot of nature writing you would like this too so this is a about a young girl that escapes a settlement and she runs into the forest. This is in 1600s. Like, look how pretty that cover is, by the way. But yes, so she runs into the forest, leaving everything she's ever known behind her. In this unknown land, threat looms on every corner in the hostile eyes of men in the forest itself and in the hungry creatures that stray upon her path. What she finds in this place will is beyond the limits of her imagination. It will bend her belief in everything that her own civilization has taught her. It sounds a little magical as well. And the cover of this book is just beautiful. Like, I, I just love that. The nature writing, the imagery that, that the forest, the snow, the cold, it it's just it's fantastic so far and i cannot wait to finish this one the second book i got from the library is the narrow road to the deep north by richard flanagan this i've spoken about in my australian tbr um video if you've not watched it go give it a watch but this was the booker prize winner of i don't know oh 2014 <laughs> But yes, this is an Australian Booker Prize winner in 2014. This is set in August 1943 during the war. And this is set in a Japanese prisoner of war camp on the Thai Burma Death Railway. And we follow an Australian surgeon called Dorigo Evans. And it is about love and death and war and, and hope and things like that. I love reading about war. Um, 
it's not a very easy topic to read about a lot of times i find myself very bent out and very emotionally trained after reading a book like this but regardless i think they're such important reads i've only read one other book that is also set in a prisoner of war camp on the thai burma death railway so i'm really intrigued on like learning more about it and excited to see what richard flanagan um will bring i guess to this horrific horrific event the third book i got from the library is august blue by deborah deborah levy it is about i think music <laughs> i didn't know a lot about it before putting my reservation in so let me just read you the blurb at the height of her career, concert pianist Elsa M. Anderson, former child prodigy now in her 30s, walks off the stage in Vienna mid-performance. Interesting. So we follow this ex-child prodigy pianist and we follow her across Europe. And it says it is shadowed by the elusive woman who bought the dancing horses. That is interesting it sounds like it's gonna be a weird read and i am so i'm all for it <laughs> i just love the blue of this cover i think it's so striking so minimalist but i don't know i just think it's so artistic <laughs> so the next book i borrowed from the library is close to home by michael mcgee I don't know a lot about this book and the blurb is a bit long so I'm gonna attempt to summarize it or just read like the last two paragraphs. It says, drawing from his own experiences, Michael McGee writes about contemporary masculinity as shaped by place and class, by individual and collective trauma, by silence and violence, but also by courage, loyalty and the will to survive. He writes about the complicated kinds of love that exist in a family brother to brother, mother to son. He writes about the intimacies of male friendship and the painful sensation of no longer belonging among the people you grew up with. He writes about what happens in the gaps between what is sayable. And he writes with dazzling intelligence and humanity about the generational cycles of poverty and crime which keeps young working class men in harm's way and the struggle to break free from them. That is very, very intriguing. I don't think I've read anything like that. And I've heard really good things about it as well. So I'm just so intrigued. I think this is going to be my next read. Like reading that has just bumped this book so high up my TBR. So yeah, I think this is going to be my next book after The Faster Wilds. I'm gonna only really quickly talk about these three books because I talked about it in my last video, the book haul. So these three books are Hello Beautiful by Anne Napolitano, Tom Lake by Anne Patchett, and Come and Get It by Kylie Reed. These are um, three very, very, very popular books and I really want to get to them. I think they're fairly new releases as well. So yeah, I got them for Christmas, so I'm super, super excited to read them. I've like talked about the plot in the book haul, but yeah, these are very hyped up books and I am excited to get to these. The next book is a Greek mythology retelling and it is by Natalie Haynes called The Stone Blind Medusa's Story. So I got this because it was long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction last year in 2023. But I am just not the biggest fan of Greek mythology retellings. So I put it off and put it off and the shortlist got announced and this wasn't on it. So it just kind of like I honestly just I forgot that I bought this book. But yes, yeah, so it is we follow the story of Medusa and it, I don't know I don't think I've ever read from the perspective of, Med of Medusa before a lot of the Greek mythology retellings has been um, set in the Trojan War so this is going to be really interesting and uh, I do need like a lighter fantastical 
book to break up all the war books so yeah I'm super excited to read this one I don't really have a lot of high hopes for it like I don't think it's going to be another five out of five star book but I do want to read more Greek mythology retellings because I did enjoy the few that I read they're not like my favorites um but I'm hopeful I will find one book that is like an absolute gem and will make me fall in love with Greek mythology. So yes. The next book and the last one is a bit of a chunky one and I am intimidated by chunky books and this one specifically because I've heard really mixed reviews and like I've been unsure about it but recently I heard a really good review from a book tuber that I trust for this book coming up again so I look through my shelves and lo and behold I do have it um this was long listed for the Booker Prize 2023 which is why I bought it and it's In Ascension by Martin McInnes I never got around to it because as I said I was intimidated by like the sheer size of it and it wasn't shortlisted so it wasn't really high on my TBR list but I really do want to pick it up. I do want to read it. I'm going to read you the blurb of it. So it says, Lei grew up in Rotterdam, drawn to the waterfront as an escape from her unhappy home life and her volatile father. Enchanted by the undersea world of her childhood, she excels in marine biology, traveling the globe to study ancient organisms. When a trench is discovered in the Atlantic Ocean, Lei joins the exploration team, hoping to find evidence of the Earth's first life forms. What she instead finds calls into question everything we know about our own beginnings. That is so interesting. It's talking about like a space agency and it talks about, I, I suppose, is this like alien life form? Is this kind of first contact? Like I'm not sure, but this sounds really intriguing. Like it's marrying together sci-fi and like literary fiction a little bit yeah genuinely i feel like the the blurb makes it sound that way and that is really intriguing and yeah i'm just excited to see how the author is gonna kind of again like marry the two together and like kind of bend the genre a little bit i really do enjoy it when authors do that i think it's it's so creative and i i love that so that is everything that's on my physical TBR list before the Women's Prize 2024. That is a really chunky, chunky list. And I am pretty sure I'm not going to get around to all of it because I still have about, I think, about six or seven reservations I've put in the library. They're not all going to come in at the same time, but I think a few of them are on their way. So... I am going to prioritize my library holds because I need to return them and when the long list gets released I'm going to prioritize that and then I'm probably going to return a bunch of my unread library reads and then push that back till after the shortlist and everything's been announced after the women's prize um, been wrapped up. I am so so excited about the women's prize. I follow that prize every single year i followed it for i want to say like three and four four years now and it's never let me down i've always been like really really in love with everything they've put out and yeah i can't wait i will definitely kind of document my journey as i read through the long list and take everybody watching with me so if you're interested um in the women's prize for fiction please watch along and let me know if you have any predictions for the prize i have a few predictions i'm not really gonna like i don't want to jinx it or anything but i've watched a lot of prediction videos on youtube and i think they're really really interesting and yeah that's it for this video thank you so much for watching come back for more women's prize for fiction related content if you're interested and that's it Thank you so much. Bye.